welcome back to part two of my 2013 favourites and you should have already seen my makeup and nail picks in the previous video and this is going to be all about skincare, hair care and body care today. So as I said in my first video I went back through a lot of old blog posts and a few old favourites videos and really got a kind of list together of all the things that I've loved throughout the year. So I've picked quite a few products in each category so I think this is going to be quite a long one again so I hope you're sitting comfortably um, and the first category is skincare. So my favourite makeup remover of the year has to be Bioderma. This is the Sensibo H2O and I've gone through phases of using quite oily eye makeup removers, lighter ones, gentler ones like this, but this is the one I always come back to. It's literally just like using water on your eyes that dissolves away everything. Um, and I kind of like to take this around the face as well to get off the bulk of my makeup before I go into cleanser, but I think it's just unrivaled. And now that it's a lot easier to get hold of, it's definitely one to try out. So my favourite cleanser of the year, which I'm sure is going to come as no surprise, it's probably going to be in quite a few different people's favourite videos, is the Emma Hardy Amazing Face Morning Good Cleansing Balm. And this really exploded this year. Everybody went mad for it. I think every single beauty blogger was talking about it. Probably everyone in the country had one. I have gone through phases of using other cleansers, but this is the one that I just love and it just makes such a difference as soon as I go back to using it I can tell that my skin feels more nourished and plumped and full um, and it's just such a nice experience massaging in and then taking it off with the muslin cloth and it's got a beautiful smell to it too so it's very uplifting and it does take off makeup and cleanse my skin brilliantly so I really really can't fault that one. So this year I've really got into using toner and I tried out quite a few different kinds and I think the one that's come out on top has to be the Clarins Gentle Exfoliating Toner and this is kind of one of those toners that's an exfoliating hybrid so it has these AHAs, I think this one actually has glycolic in it which just help to polish and buff the surface of the skin without using something like an abrasive manual kind of beaded exfoliator. The thing I like about this one though compared to some of the others like the Alpha H Liquid Gold and the Pixi Glow Tonic is that it actually contains glycerin and um, so it's got quite a thick consistency and it's very moisturising. Sometimes with the exfoliating toners your skin can feel just slightly stripped after you've used them um, but because this one has the glycerin in it, it leaves it feeling quite comfortable and quite refreshed so I think that's definitely my favourite toner of the year. For times when I do feel like I need a manual scrub and it's very rarely, just tends to be kind of around my nose and sometimes on my forehead, I think the Bioderma Hydro Bio is a really great option because it's very very gentle. It comes within this kind of cream um, and it's just got a small amount of kind of abrasive particles in it but they're just enough to get rid of any dryness any kind of flaky patches so when I do need an exfoliator that's a bit more abrasive I do always go for this one so my favorite serum and I do love my serums I have quite a few different ones lined up on my bathroom shelf but I think if I had to just use one forever it would have to be hydroluron and I think just the amount of times I've repurchased this has to say everything about it I'm probably on my fourth or fifth one now and I know you only get a small amount in there but it really does go a long way it's got a very gel like consistency and it's actually made up of hyaluronic acid which really helps to promote water in the skin so when you actually use a moisturiser on top of this it almost acts like a glue that sticks the moisturiser to you so it really locks in all that hydration um, and nourishment and moisture so it's really great a little extra if you feel like your skin slightly dehydrated and even though I have slightly oily skin at times my t-zone can get a little bit oily it still doesn't make that kind of overly greasy it just keeps you know a nice plumped fresh feeling in my skin. So speaking of moisturisers, I actually have two picks here and I have one for day and one for night just because I feel like my skin, it does need something slightly different at different times of the day. Um, but my absolute favourite for a daytime moisturiser is the Origins Ginseng and this is actually an energy boosting one so it's really uplifting and brightening and you can feel it really just lifting your skin once you put it on and it's got this beautiful kind of like zingy orangey smell to it which is lovely but it really helps my makeup stay on better I find because it's quite a gel like consistency and I have slightly oilier skin it really absorbs and it doesn't make it too greasy looking it doesn't come through makeup and um, but it just needs a really nice smooth base so that's my favorite one for the daytime and then for the nighttime this is probably my most recent sort of discovery of everything that I have here today um, but this is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream and I do like to use something a bit richer on my skin overnight just because I find when I don't have makeup on it does tend to sort of get slightly drier and I suppose it's on there for longer so I want something more hydrated overnight um, but this is really nice because it has a lot more moisture to it it's definitely more hydrating than the ginseng origins one but it doesn't still kind of feel greasy it sinks in really really well um, but I can definitely tell there's a lot more moisture in my skin with this one so I think for day and night those two are my favorite favorite ones of the year 
And then for my favourite eye cream, I have pretty much used up all of this. There's nothing left. I'm scraping it out of the bottom of the pot. But this is the Bobbi Brown Hydrating Eye Cream. And I love this stuff. It was pretty much sold to me by a sales assistant. And I didn't even really want it. But I'm so glad I bought it because it's just a really lightweight texture. But it gives so much moisture around the eyes. And I find, especially as I have kind of quite dark circles around my eyes. When I wear a lot of concealer it used to make it look quite flaky and just a bit kind of cakey on there but using this underneath just changes that so much. It just gives so much moisture that the concealer absorbs better and it sits well for longer um, so that's definitely my favourite eye cream of the year. And then for my favourite SPF of the year it pretty much goes without saying it's the Kiehl's Ultralight Daily UV Defence SPF 50 and I use this religiously every single day. I'm quite afraid of kind of what the sun can do to my skin so I like to make sure it's protected whenever I go outside. The thing I like about this one though is because it's such a high factor you'd expect it to be quite greasy and sticky feeling because it tends to be the higher the factor the kind of more you can feel it on your skin but it's actually incredibly lightweight. You can barely feel anything extra once you put this on um, but it just gives that nice layer of protection as well. So my favourite mask of the year is kind of a hard one to choose because I really love masks and I go through them quite a lot uh, but I think if I had to pick just one it would be the Antibodies Aura Manuka Honey Mask because it kind of does a few things in one. It's very moisturising and soothing and cooling so great if you have redness and irritation um, but it's also quite deeply cleansing and the Manuka Honey in it is actually antibacterial so it's quite good if you've got blemishes and you just want to kind of really clear out the skin so that one is probably been my favourite and it smells beautiful too which always helps. And then Last of all comes my favourite lip balm of the year which without a doubt has to be the NYX Revdamil lip balm which is just the perfect balance of moisturising and long lasting um, and it also has quite a nice kind of satiny matte finish, it's not a really glossy one that sits on the lips heavily um, so it, it's really nice to use on the lipstick and it just moisturises like no other so definitely my favourite. So the next category is hair care and I've changed my hair quite a lot over the last year, I had really long hair at the start and then it was dyed um, and then I went for the chop halfway through the year and then I've gone even shorter shorter now so it's kind of hard to pick a certain set of products that um, I love throughout the whole year just because as my hair has changed so have my kind of preference on products but I've kind of had a big think about it and I think these are the ones that really I was able to use with long hair, short hair, whichever. So best shampoo and conditioner I think has to go to the Bumble and Bumble Surf range and I was so excited when I heard these were coming out because I'm a big fan of the surf spray but I think these just do everything that does but in a more kind of subtle way so they just add a bit of texture bit of kind of grit and hold your hair, a bit of wave even if it's quite long. Um, so just like you just walked off a beach really and your hair's got a nice kind of beachy wave to it. I also like to use them now because they're quite lifting and volumising. They don't weigh my hair down at all so I can get quite a lot of bounce with it. So I think they're just the best kind of all-rounder, long or short hair, best shampoo and conditioner of the year. So I am a little bit lazy when it comes to hair masks and treatments and I don't do them as often as I probably should um, but one that I did use consistently throughout last year was the Charles Worthington Moisture Seal and this is kind of a bit different, it's a mask that you put on before you wash your hair, um, it's a very thick rich balm, you have to actually scoop a bit out and almost kind of emulsify it in your hand and melt it and it turns into this lovely thick oil and it's very very moisturising so I just put it on the ends of my hair and um, leave it on for about 20 minutes and then wash my hair as normal and um, even though you sort of wash it out it still leaves this real kind of injection of moisture in so it sort of almost heals split ends and stops dryness, stops brittleness in the hair. So if I'm going to use anything on my hair it's definitely that one. One thing I really do use every single time I wash my hair though are hair oils and I like to put them in damp hair before I blow dry it or before I let it dry naturally and I have used so, so many this year. I've tried so many different ones but it always comes back to the original which is Moroccan oil and I've had this bottle now for about two years maybe and it's still going strong but I've tried so many different ones and this is just the best. It's moisturising enough but not too kind of greasy, it doesn't leave any residue on my hair um, and it really helps speed up blow drying as well which is great. And I know a lot of people think this is kind of just a big load of silicon in a bottle. I know it's kind of a little bit controversial sometimes as well, some people hate it, some people love it, um, but I really think it's made a difference to the way my hair feels and the actual kind of texture of my hair too so I will carry on using that one. 
So best styling product next, and this was really hard to decide because I do go through quite a lot of them, but I think if I had to pick one, it has to be the Orbe Maximista Thickening Spray. Although I've only discovered this relatively recently, I wish I'd had it in my life a lot sooner. It's just amazing. It gives volume and lift and hold. It's basically just a spray you put in your hair um, when it's wet and then blow dry it. But I also like to use it on dry hair before I'm styling it. So if I'm using something like um, a heat tool, just putting a little bit through it, it gives it just some extra hold, which helps prolong a curl or helps keep your hair straighter um, and also just to kind of mess through and give a bit of texture too so it's definitely multi-purpose it's definitely amazing and I think Orbe just do a really great range of products I really can't wait to try some more things from them next year now I had to include the next category because it plays quite a big part in my life and it's best dry shampoo and I'm quite lazy when it comes to washing my hair, I like to do it about two or three times a week, um, maybe a little bit more so now that it's short because it's a bit easier to manage, um, but dry shampoo is definitely a lifesaver and I have found this year, I've gone back to the good old classic Batiste um, original smell one. It's cheap, cheerful and it does the job and I really like the clean scent to it. I used to really like the tropical one and the kind of spicier one I think or the flowery one um, but this one is just so much nicer and fresher and I feel like it, it kind of gives you that effect that you really have washed your hair although you obviously haven't um, but yeah definitely the best dry shampoo and probably the cheapest product I have here in this whole favourites video. Next is Best Heat Tool, and I haven't really talked about these a lot, um, and I'm not sure how I'm going to show these on camera, but these are the Extremity um, Heat Rollers from Enrapture, and I'm going to put these down. Before I actually bought these, I was looking for something that would give my hair that kind of just blow-dried look, quite volumised, with sort of flicked out ends, um, and I tried and tried to master the twirling of the brush and the hairdryer thing, but just wasn't going to happen. Um, so I was actually recommended these by Corrie of Dizzy Brunette who has the best, best hair ever and she actually has quite long hair and they give really nice kind of wavy curls on hair um, but I bought them and I tried them out and they just give that perfect sort of volume bounce and little flick as well so I absolutely love them and they're all I've been using since I got them and they're actually a little bit different to regular curlers. They have um, just your standard barrel that heats up um, once you plug them in but they also have the clip which has a little ceramic plate on it too so it heats it from both sides of the hair I guess which is a lot quicker um, and I find the curls hold a lot better this way rather than using those little pin things. Although I did go through a phase of using all sorts of different kind of curling wands and straighteners and things at the beginning of the year these definitely stand out to me as being just the best thing that I've come across um, for a long long time. So last of all in the hair category is brushes and I had to pick two for this one because they all do so many different things um, but my favourite brush for just brushing my hair I guess is the Tangle Teaser and I've talked about this a lot it's really just a revelation when it comes to brushing your hair especially if you have quite knotty hair like I do this tends to knot within a second of brushing it so this makes it so much easier it's got this really kind of short spiky little handle thing um, and it takes a lot longer I'd say than brushing your hair normally um, but there's no pain there's no kind of snagging and ripping and damaging of your hair so definitely definitely worth it and then my favorite kind of styling brush has to be um, a backcomb brush and you can get these anywhere but I happen to have one from Denman and it's got a very soft kind of bristle um, thin kind of head to it and you can just add a little bit of texture and volume. I tend to use it mainly around the roots um, and it just gives that bit of lift. Um, because it is softer I find it's not as damaging as using like a normal brush or a back combing um, comb. Um, so yeah that's my favourite styling brush and my favourite regular brush. So the last category is body and of course the hardest question of the year what was the best perfume of 2013 and this was such a struggle I have too many perfumes and I kind of my moods change quite a lot and I like different ones on different days so I have gone for two but they're quite different and um, the first one is the Jo Malone peony and blush suede and I am in love with Jo Malone now ever since I smelt this and went to the counter and had the whole Jo Malone experience um, I just love it it's a very kind of fruity scent it's not my usual kind of thing it's also got a lot of floral in it too which Again, I don't really tend to go for it, but it's a really kind of sweet, uplifting fragrance. Um, it's very, very lightweight, so it's not overpowering. It doesn't kind of um, feel like you're wearing too much. So it's nice for people that don't like wearing a strong fragrance. I'd say it's a typical kind of like girly fragrance, although I don't really go for that thing. Um, but it does warm up once it's on the skin. It does, yeah, just that slightly bit muskier, but it's still not very deep at all. Um, but that one, I... I just love wearing it. It makes me happy when I wear it. I can see this one being um, really big in spring. And then the second one is Philosogos from Diptyque and this is a very, very different smell. It's quite deep and musky. It's kind of quite figgy um, and slightly fruity but it is a very 
kind of deep scent, um, but it's actually quite fresh and again quite uplifting. It's kind of a summer fragrance and I did actually buy this in summer so I suppose I kind of associate it with that. It really is unlike anything that I've ever smelled before. It makes me feel quite sophisticated when I'm wearing it so it's kind of an elegant fragrance that one. When it comes to body wash, I'm really not that picky. I tend to just use whatever's in the bath, whether that's mine or my boyfriend's. Um, but I found one this year that I really enjoy using and it's the Deep Sleep Shower Gel from This Works. And they have a whole deep sleep range of bath and body products which are beautiful, but I find this one really kind of convenient to use. It has this really calming, relaxing, lavender, herbal, planty smell um, and it just kind of relaxes you and chills you out. Um, it's really nice to use before bed because it just almost makes you feel quite sleepy um, and ready to go to bed. Um, but I also like to use it in the morning sometimes, which I guess is kind of cheating. Um, but if I know I've got a busy day ahead or a long day at work, something like that, if I use it in the morning it kind of just calms me down and gets me ready for the day. Um, and it's really nice, kind of quite moisturising formula to it as well. It doesn't foam up quite as well as some other shower gels I've used, so I do have to put it on a little kind of a spongy thing but it's definitely um, worth it and then something else that's been sitting in my shower too which is why it looks a little bit battered and beaten is my favorite body scrub of the year and without a doubt it is pulp friction from soap and glory and I love this because it's really convenient to use rather than having to scoop one out of a tub and then kind of putting the lid back on which is just tricky when you're in a shower um, it just is a squeezy tube and it's got a nice consistency to it it's very foaming um, but it helps the little beads stick to your skin so you get more kind of scrub out of it um, it doesn't all just fall off into the bottom of the bath. With any Soap and Glory product, it smells amazing. It's actually not their signature scent. It's a quite fruity, um, fresh one, uh, but I really like it. It's really uplifting. And then for body moisturisers, and I've gone for more of a lotion and a cream, so I've got two in this category. And the first one, for pure convenience more than anything, is the Vaseline Spray and Go. And I kind of thought this was a bit of a gimmick when I saw it come out, but it is just so, so handy. You basically just spray it on, and then you can leave it, or you can just rub it in a little bit. Um, but it's a very lightweight lotion that dries and sinks in almost immediately, so really handy if you're on the go and you haven't got time but you still want to use a body lotion. They do three different flavours in this one and I've got the cocoa which I think is the nicest. I do really like the Vaseline cocoa smell so that is my favourite body lotion I guess. And then for body cream, something a bit richer, um, I have another product from Soap and Glory which is their Smoothie Star Body Butter Cream and I'm not ashamed to say I've picked this as my favourite just for the smell. It smells just oh incredible. It's like vanilla -y. it almost smells like cake, like a kind of nutty almondy cake, it's beautiful, but you know, it is a really nice moisturiser too. It's one of their butter creams which I find are so, so hydrating, so moisturising, but they're still not even that sticky at all, they do sink in really nicely, um, so that's definitely my favourite for a slightly richer option. And that is the end of my 2013 beauty favourites. That was definitely a long one. So if you've watched both parts of these videos, well done to you. Thanks for sticking around and I will see you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.